station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. KPRC TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Voice check, 1098-10-9. Uh, we have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Oh, my goodness. What a treat. Okay, so joining us now from the International Space Station, Expedition 46 Commander Scott Kelly and Flight Engineers Tim Copra and Tim Peake. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's our pleasure. Well, I just uh, saw your Christmas message, and I heard that you're orbiting the Earth 16 times Christmas Day. What are your plans for New Year's? Yeah, we're going to orbit the, the Earth 16 times on New Year's, too. And, uh, but uh, all kidding aside, we're going to, you know, we'll try to celebrate a little bit. Uh, we have uh, New Year's Day off, although it's not your typical New Year's Eve like you might experience on Earth. We still will, uh, you know, reflect on the privilege of being up here and, and uh, you know, all we have back at home. Right. Okay, so I know that when we hit 2016 that you have maybe about three more months until you complete your year in space. What does this mean for space explore exploration and travel to Mars? Well, you know, I hope... Uh, we learn some things from this flight that will uh, will help us get to Mars. Uh, there are some challenges, not only, uh, you know, with the primary reason that Misha and I are here, with which is, uh, you know, understanding, you know, the changes that occur in our own uh, own physiology, but also, you know, how to support uh, crew members, uh, whether it's psychologically or or with the life support systems here. Uh, for uh, an extended period of time. So, you know, when we do go to Mars someday, and we will, I'm not sure exactly when, but when we do, um, you know, I hope that I can say and NASA can say that this this mission, this year in space that, that Misha and I have, have spent has been, uh, you know, help, helped a little bit uh, in, in getting us there. Okay, uh, Tim, this question is for you. What are some of the most difficult things, I guess, that in space that we take for granted here on Earth? You know, living in zero gravity is both a blessing and a curse. I mean, it's a lot of fun to be in zero gravity, but uh, it makes it more difficult to keep track of your things. You have to be very diligent in where you leave things. and. Uh, you know, typically, if you put something on a table back home, it's not going to float away. So you have to be very diligent about that. And also, you know, we have to be very conscious that uh, the space station is, is our environment and uh, all the equipment we have on board sustains our lives. So you have to be very careful to make sure that we keep things in good operating order. And has uh, this mission, has it changed your perspective on, on creation, on science, just on life in general? Well, you know, one thing that I uh, have learned from, from this experience so far, and actually, you know, more so from being a part of the space station program, a space station that was built by many nations in, uh, in, a, in a very extreme environment and uh, have, has been occupied for the last 15 years um, and operated very successfully, is that there is, uh, I think, very little... Uh, limit to what people are capable of doing if they, uh, you know, they put their minds to it and they work together in a very cooperative way. And, uh, you know, I just think this this program has been a great example of what we can do in an international collaborative effort to, uh, you know, better, uh, you know, our own lives and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, improve the, the human condition. And, you know, someday hope, hopefully get us, uh, get us to Mars and, and maybe even beyond. That is excellent. I, I spoke to some elementary, middle school, and high school students, and they wanted to know um, what you guys do for water and then how do you guys sleep? What do you sleep in?
Well, that's a great question. And uh, the one great thing about the space station is the recycling. And, you know, we're trying to make attempts to have a 100% closed cycle, which is what we're going to need on a future Mars trip. Um, so we recycle all of the condensation from when we exercise. We recycle uh, the vast majority of our urine and is all turned back into drinking water. Um, so that is how we're sustained with water up here. In terms of sleeping, it's really up to the individual astronaut. I've only been here for two weeks now, but uh, I find that I like to just kind of zip up my sleeping bag and just uh, float inside the crew quarters. They're not very big, so it's not like you're going to go very far. Oh, wow. Um, and I've, I've seen you guys do some somersaults, some backflips. Uh, one uh, elementary school student wanted to know how many backflips can you guys do? And can Scott's the expert. I can do a lot, but I've been up here a long time. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Scott, and then also you tweeted back in August that your favorite team was the Houston Texans. I wanted to know, is uh, Houston still your favorite team? You know, we just beat the Titans. Of course. That uh, how can you ask that question? I'm from Houston and uh I was watching the game yesterday. That was pretty awesome to see that. Hopefully next weekend we'll secure a spot in the playoffs. So pretty excited to see how this season has gone has gone from uh you know, pretty kinda scary in the beginning to, to something that uh you know is is turned around into a success story. Yeah, pretty out of this world, I guess some might say. You know, some people grew up dreaming of becoming an astronaut after spending almost a year in space and witnessing sunsets at about 240 miles above Earth. What are your dreams like? So, you know, I, I guess my... Um, I'm not sure if you're referring to my real dreams or just my dreams for the future. Uh, kind of in, uh, you know, more of a conceptual way. But, uh, you know, as far as dreams while I'm sleeping up here, I have, you know, sometimes I have Earth dreams and sometimes space dreams. And I, when I was in the, when I first got up here, and the reason I know this is because I was writing them down for a while and it kind of helped me remember. Because when I was up here last time, people asked me that question and I couldn't remember whether I dreamed of Earth or space. But uh, but I do both and, and now it's more, you know, Earth related. But as far as, you know, my, my, my dreams for, um, you know, what I want after I get back from this flight, those kind of things, you know, you, you do have a unique perspective up here. It's this, uh, you know, uh, one of my colleagues described it as the orbital perspective, a little bit different perspective on Earth when you realize, hey, everything that's basically ever existed, you know, that we know, we love, people, history, it's right down there. And it, uh, you know, 250 miles below us. And it, it does give you a sense for, uh, you know, this more of a, you know, a stewardship for the planet. You know, how, you know, we need to learn to work together better because we are all, you know, members of, of Team Earth down there. And, uh, you know, we just need to get along. So my, my dreams would be that we do just that. We, you know, we, we take care of ourselves, each other better. We take care of the planet better. And, uh, you know, that's what I hope for. Incredibly insightful. Scott Kelly, Tim Copra, and Tim Peake, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Happy New Year. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KPRC-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KHOU-TV. Station, this is KHOU-TV. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Commander Scott Kelly, along with flight engineers Tim Copra and Tim Peake, uh, from the International Space Station. Not every day we get your undivided attention. So, gentlemen, thank you. Oh, it's our pleasure. So I have to ask you, uh, from Astronaut Peake's Twitter page, I see that Santa paid you a visit. Uh, what did he bring you guys? 
Well, you know, we're very fortunate. We have the benefit of a small allowance of crew care package. So really it was just some photographs and notes and letters from friends and family uh, all wishing us well on Christmas and also a couple of extra food treats as well. So I, I had some uh, fudge sent up from Scotland. Oh, lovely. Uh, uh, Commander Kelly, I know this is your third Christmas in space. Was Santa nice to you? What did you guys have uh, for your Christmas dinner? Well, Santa, I guess, was nice because I did get something. Um, and our Christmas dinner was, you know, we don't have special food sent up here for the holidays, unfortunately. So it was really just what we could kind of scavenge. Although Tim did have some foie gras, which was really good, um, which I guess was, was special. Um, but, uh, you know, generally it's just our, our normal menu and we kind of, get the things out of it that sort of seem like uh you know holiday food like the uh the turkey uh cold cuts and uh some cornbread stuffing things like that it, it's not bad though frog frog wah is pretty fancy yeah mr copra you just arrived and then six late six days later you were forced to do the spacewalk have you gotten any rest at all You know, actually, I wouldn't term it as uh, being forced to do it because, uh, you know, it's one of the, the highlights of any time that we're able to, to have a trip to space to be able to do a spacewalk. And uh, we actually had a pretty busy first couple of weeks, but then uh, Christmas was off and, and the weekend was mostly off. So we've had time to recover. And uh, Tim Peake and I will be preparing for another spacewalk here coming up in a couple of weeks. You guys see Earth from such a different point of view. Has your perspective from outer space influenced your belief system, uh, politics, feelings about the environment? I'll start with Commander Kelly. Well, you, you know, it does. And, and one of our colleagues uh, described it as, like you said, this, this orbital perspective where, uh, you know, every, everybody, every person that's ever lived, every... Uh, Thing that's basically every ever happened minus a few ha have occurred 250 miles below us and you know when we look out at the earth we see an atmosphere that looks very fragile um, we see you know lately like on this flight I've noticed a lot of uh, you know weather systems that you and weather phenomena that occur that you wouldn't expect to see in certain areas um, you know, you see deforestation, you see wildfires, uh, you see smog over certain parts of the world that, uh, you know, is there practically continuously. So it does give you this, uh, you know, a sense that we need to take care of the earth because, you know, it's the, uh, you know, it's the only thing that's keeping everyone down there alive. And, uh, you know, we, and it does look like we are all part of one big, you know, big team, big you know, one country. There are no political borders when you look uh, look down at the planet. So it does give you the sense that we need to kind of treat each other better, take care of each other. I follow the news very closely up here, and uh, and it's it's mostly bad all the time, and uh, and it's all happening right down there. So it does give you a little bit different perspective. Yeah, same question to you, uh, Tim, the, the Mr. Peak and Mr. Cobra. I think really just to back up what Scott said there, it's, it is a unique perspective, it's a unique view, it's incredibly stunning, incredibly beautiful. The first thing that struck me when I saw the Earth from space was just how tiny and fragile our atmosphere is. It's the thinnest band um, surrounding planet Earth. And it makes you realize that, uh, you know, we, we really do need to uh, take care of our, our fragile atmosphere. Um, and I, I think it, it kind of gives you that perspective of seeing the Earth, um, you know, as a, a whole planet uh, with interconnected weather systems and water systems and, and a real respect for the environment. It's really hard to add much to that, but I think one thing that uh, is very striking to astronauts when we come up here is not just the Earth, but how black it is in space. And so uh, we recognize that uh, what we have is what we have. And beyond that is, uh, is our vast distances to the, the next planet or even the next uh, celestial body. So uh, we need to do our part to take care of our planet. Commander Kelly, I know you're on day 276 in space. You've broken a record. 
Uh, what has that amount of time and space done to your body that you've noticed, and also, most importantly, your psyche? You know, a lot of the data we're collecting is, uh, is stuff that is, you know, via blood draws and other samples, uh, imaging data. Uh, the science that's involved in this one-year stay is looking at me in a, on a genetic level, our, our bone loss, muscle uh, loss, uh, or gain in, in some cases, and, uh, you know, effects on our immune system. Um, and like you said, your, your psyche from a, uh, uh, you know, psychological perspective. So a lot of that data is not something that, that you can see. It's something that's measured in a in a laboratory and in some cases will be uh, not even, you know, written about or, uh, you know, analyzed until I get back. So, you know, there are some changes you, you notice. Uh, you know, we exercise a lot, so you notice, you know, muscle gain in certain areas and loss in other areas. You know, we don't, we don't walk, so, you know, your calves get, get kind of small um, from, you know, not having to support your weight and walk around for a while. Uh, from a psychological perspective, I'm doing fine. You know, I'll have no problem making in, making it to the end of this experience. Although, I do feel like I've lived my whole life up here now, and uh, and you know, look forward to getting home someday. You will be home very soon in March. What is the first thing you're going to eat when you come back to Houston? Uh, it's a good question. I. I haven't thought that far yet. I'm not counting down the days yet, so I'll let you know, though, when I figure that one out. The answer is Tex-Mex, Commander Kelly, Tex-Mex. Okay. Uh, Mr. Peak, I, there's a funny story of you calling the wrong number from the International Space Station. Did the person know who you were, and, and what did they say to you? No, they didn't know who I was. Um, I, I blame that on my Excel spreadsheet. It had a rounding error, but uh, <laughs> that's my story anyway. Um, and yeah, I, I spoke to this lady and uh, before I could explain myself, she thought I was just a, a, a sort of drunk Christmas Eve reveler. So she put the phone down on me, but I know that she's been subsequently tra tracked down um, and it, the story has been explained to her. That's hilarious. I bet she regrets not keeping you on the phone there. One last question, because I know you guys have to go. What are your plans for New Year's Day, and do you make New Year's resolutions, gentlemen? Well, New Year's Day, we have a day off, so my plan is to, to rest. And uh, I generally don't make New Year's resolutions. I'll let Tim answer that, too. You know, I'd have to say we're probably too busy to be thinking about New Year's resolutions. We have a lot of work to do up here. And uh, along with what Scott said, it's going to be a day to relax and spend some time with our crewmates. Mr. Peak? I I'm in, I'm in the same boat as uh, Tim and Scott there. I, I don't really make uh, New Year's resolutions, but I'll certainly be enjoying New Year's Eve. Uh, I want to take some time out to go to the cupola, look down on planet Earth and think about everybody who's uh, celebrating uh, New Year's Eve um, as we pass around all those cities in the world. I think it's a, an incredibly unique perspective to enjoy New Year's Eve. From everybody here at KHOU, we wish you the best and happy New Year to all of you gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. It's our pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, KPRC TV and KHOU TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.